Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another book review video. We are gonna talk about my February reads. I'm gonna give you my reviews on them. But first, for those that do not know, I do have a Facebook book club group. So if you'd like to join that, I will put a link down below. I try to stay active, as active over there as I can. We all know I work a lot. I do the best I can, but we have a nice, just small group of people over there um, where we normally will read a book pick that we all picked, but March I kinda, dropped the ball and didn't get a March book up, but we'll, we'll, we'll regroup for April. But if you'd like to join us, go ahead and click that link down below and join us over there. Also, if you are new here and you enjoy book review videos, I hope you will stick around and subscribe, hit the notification bell, you'll be notified when I upload a video. And also I'm over on Instagram. I do share some book stuff over on Instagram. So if you wanna come over there and follow me and let me know and I'll follow you back. Um, first up, I do, have a really bad memory. And plus I like to read the synopsis of the books to you. So I do have my laptop right here in front of me. So if you see me looking down and reading, that's what I'm doing. Um, I just like to make sure I am getting all the points of all the um, books that I wanna talk about. Um, I read five books and two novellas during the month of February. The novellas I read were part of a six part romance series on Kindle Unlimited. I only made it through four of the six books. We'll talk about the reason why, and we'll also talk about those first. Now, the other two that I actually read in January, I did not talk about those in my January review because I just figured I would talk about them as a whole. Um, as always, I'm going to give you the Goodreads rating at the time of me filming this video. I always look them up the same day that I'm filming this video and that way I have the most up-to-date rating. But as you guys know, that can change on a daily basis as people rate and review books. So I'm just telling you the time of this. And then I'll also give you my personal rating. Um, there'll be no spoilers in this review video. I read exclusively eBooks um, with an occasional audiobook. I'm, I'm I don't know, I was audiobooks, I'm kind of still on the fence about them. So I just feel like I don't get as much out of them as I do with a regular book, but I do listen to them every once in a while. Um, I find my books at my local library um, through the Libby app, through Amazon Prime Reading, which is free with your Amazon Prime service, um, through Kindle Unlimited, which is a pay service through Amazon. And there's so many books to choose from over on Kindle Unlimited. Um, and also do find good sales through, um, you know, through Kindle and through Apple Books, but I normally will not pay over $3.99, $4.99 if it's an author or a book that I'm really wanting to, that I wanted to read and I can't find it anywhere else, then I will purchase the book um, if I know it's like a reliable author. <laughs> and I have been known to pay full price for books if it is an author that I just love and I can't get it through my library for months and months and months. So but those are the primary places I get my books from. If I did find a book through Prime Reading or Kindle Unlimited, I will let you know. So that way, if you do have either one of those services, you can go pick those up. Um, there will be links to these services as well as links to each of the books, Goodreads pages, and through the Amazon page where you can read reviews or purchase the books. Um, if you wanna be friends on Goodreads, I always have my Goodreads link in every one of my description boxes. So go ahead and hit that so we can be friends over at Goodreads. Um, and all, as always, these tend to be longer videos. So grab a snack, get a drink, settle in, and let's get into the reviews. I do my reviews based on the order how I read them, not like how I rank them. It's just easier for me. Um, I give a description of the book and then briefly talk about how I felt about it and if I recommend it. And again, I don't give any kind of spoilers. So sometimes I'll be very vague just because if it's a certain type of book, that I feel like if I go into too much description, it's gonna give it away. And I do read a lot of suspense mystery thrillers. So those are sometimes kind of hard to give a lot of information about, you know? So first we're gonna talk about the Kindle Unlimited series. I believe it was called the Improbable Meet Cute series. There were six books in it. Um, I only read four of the six. Um, they, I started losing interest in the series while reading book four. Um, this is a series of six novellas written by popular romance novelists. Um, we have Christina Lauren, Abby Jimenez, Sally Thorne, Jasmine Guillory, don't know, Ashley Poston, Poston, and Soraya Wilson. Now, I've only previously had um, 
heard or read books from three of them. And that was Christina Lauren, Abby Jimenez, and Sally Thorne. I have heard of Jasmine Guillory, but I had not read anything from her. Um, I had good heard good things about that author and those books from other like YouTubers and book talk and things like that. Um, but I never read anything. A Ashley Poston and Soraya Wilson, I've seen their names over on books over, you know, on Kindle and Apple books, but not really heard much about them. Um, let's go ahead and talk about book number one, which was called the, or novella number one, which was called The Exception to the Rule by Christina Lauren. My rating was five stars. The Goodreads rating is 4.28 stars. So let me go ahead and read the synopsis a little bit of this novella. Again, you have to be very brief when you're talking novellas because they are so short. Um, I believe this one was about 102 pages. One typo and a boy and girl connect by chance. Wishing each other a happy Valentine's Day isn't the end. In fact, it becomes a friendly annual tradition with rules, no pics, no real names, nothing too personal. As years pass, the rules for their email dates are breaking and they're sharing more than they imagined, including the urge to ask, what if we actually met? I am a huge fan of books that include text messages, emails, letters, etc. If you don't enjoy that type of format, you may want to skip this one. I did read some reviews um, on this one after I read the book, and that's one of the things people complained about. Um, but then as I read further in some of the reviews, it's because they had listened to it on audio, and apparently when you listen to it to audio, it literally says email to blah, 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 from the subject that, you know, so I guess it probably got a little bit repetitive, but I just, I love those types of books. Um, I know they have a name, can never remember the name, but those types of books are one of my favorite formats. But for me, this was hands down the best of the four that I did read. I absolutely, love, which is no surprise. I love Christina Lauren, have not, not liked anything that I have read by those authors. Um, but I was so shocked that I could actually get so much out of a 100-page story. I think this was before I read the other novellas in the series. I think this was only the second novella that I'd ever read. And that was, the first one was like back in December. It was like a Christmas one or something. And I was just, again, shocked. I just never picked them up because I always just think it's kind of a waste of a read. It's like, what are you going to get out of a 100-page book? You know, but I got so much out of this. This would have been an amazing full length novel and I just, I wish that it had been rather than just a novella, but I loved it, loved it, loved it so much. Novella number two, Worst Wingman Ever by ha Abby Jimenez. My rating 4.5 stars, Goodreads rating 4.05 stars. Synopsis, Holly is dealing with the impending death of her grandmother and still reeling from a bad breakup. One bright spot, a Valentine's Day card on Holly's windshield even if it wasn't meant for her. An amusing mistake soon turns into a lovely exchange of anonymous notes, little acts of kindness and a growing affection between two strangers. What happens when one of them has to say goodbye? So again, another one that had notes. I really enjoyed that part of it, you know, because you got to read the notes in there. I really enjoyed that part. Just so you know, this one's not as lighthearted as the first one. And due to its length, I did feel like the ending was a bit rushed. This one was only 60 pages, I believe. So like 61 pages. So it wasn't quite as, it's amazing how 40 pages does so much more for a story. So I do think it could have been a little bit longer, you know, because the other was a hundred pages, um, but it just felt a little bit rushed to me. Um, but again, this one would have made a really incredible full length no novel because it would just allow for more character development and more story development. I just, I think that, it just would have came together a little bit better. But again, I do feel like I did get a lot out of the book, even the 60 pages. And it was really fast paced, of course, lots of emotion. And of course I had a sweet little dog in it, which is always a bonus in a story. Um, but again, my 4.5 stars rating is just because I do feel like the ending was a bit rushed. And I think that even initial like 20, 40 pages would have just made it come together just a little bit better. Novella number three, Rosie and the Dreamboat by Sally Thorne. My rating, 2.5 stars. Goodreads rating, 3.47. This book is about Rosie Whitaker and her sister. They are up for some Galentine's pampering at a day spa. Getting locked inside a flotation tank is so rosy. Even enter a firefighter hero determined to pry this luckless pearl out of her high-tech shell. 
All Rosie has to go on is a dreamy voice and a flirty sense of humor. Remain calm, Rosie. This could be what you've been waiting for. Is this the man she's waited for her whole life? I'd only read one other book by Sally Thorne, which I adored, loved it so much, easy five-star read for me. So I went into this with really high hopes, thinking, okay, we had a good one with my other two favorite romance novelists, you know, Christina Lauren, Abby Jimenez, they knocked it out of the park as always. I just thought, okay, I have read that one other book by Sally Thorne, loved it, always heard really good things about her other books. And I was just, I was so sadly disappointed. I liked the first part of it. Now, I I wish I would have wrote down how many pages this one had. Again, I think it was around 60, 70 pages. Um, the, so the first part of it was really good. I was really into it, really going through it. But the rest of it just felt so, it just fell flat after that. I had the hardest time picturing this flotation tank. They kept talking about it looking like a big toilet. And I would just, I could not like picture it. And that was the whole entire story was her in this flotation tank. Maybe, I don't know if these things are even a thing. So I have no like background on it. I, it was just, it sounded so awkward, so confusing. I, I just could not picture it. And everything I was picturing was like some sort of like alien spaceship thing. And I, I don't know, it just wasn't working for me. And I mean, and so I was already there at that point thinking, okay, I, mean, I was so distracted by that, like trying to picture it that I just, I don't know, it was really hard. And then the interactions between the firefighters, like the firefighters, the main firefighter and the other firefighters, it just seemed so strange. And even like just the other people involved, it just did not seem very realistic. I don't know. I know when you're reading, you're supposed to suspend dis disbelief, which I do all the time. I read horror books. I read mystery thriller books. None of those usually are anything that's, you know, going to happen to somebody. And it's always outrageous. But when I read romance novels, I tend to feel like, okay, those are just a little bit different. You know, they're in a little bit different of a category. And I don't feel like you ever really have to suspend disbelief with some of those things. You know, this just seemed so odd. The interactions were odd. The dialogue was odd. I don't know. I just, I did not enjoy it at all. And I almost did not pick up the fourth one. Novella number four, Drop, Cover, and Hold On by Jasmine Guillory. I'm sorry. I'm not really sure if I'm saying that right. My rating, two stars. Goodreads rating, 3.02 stars. So at least a lot of people would agree this one wasn't as good as the other ones because they had a lot higher ratings. Uh, the synopsis, this Valentine's Day, Daisy Murray has her heart set on binge watching rom-coms. Instead, an earthquake traps her inside a bakery with this impossibly rude and insufferable handsome owner and head baker. They already have a history. She's always smiled, he's always scowled. Where better to finally get to know each other than amid the disaster? Then again, they have no choice. Besides, it could have its sweet, undeniable, and unpredictable perks. So I have to be honest, again, after the disappointment of book three, I almost didn't continue on. But I've heard nothing but good things about this author, so I wanted to give it a chance. I just could not connect with the main character and the whole romance, like, so weird it moved so quickly like quickly to the bedroom and it just it took me by surprise like it just didn't work for me I was like okay wait a second like we go from here to here and there I mean I know it's a short book and I know it's a novella so I guess they had to move things quickly but it just it didn't work for me it did not work for me at all it was just weird and odd and I don't know I and then I tried to read the next two <laughs> So let's talk about there are two more, again, by those other two novelists I mentioned, um, Ashley Poston and Soraya Wilson. And I, I tried to read the next two. I, I like I read a few pages of the next one. Just it wasn't into it. And so I read a few pages of the last one, just was not into it. Now, I'm not blaming them, those authors at all. I really just think that because those disappointment of the other two, I just was, I just wasn't into it. And so I'm not going to say I has anything to do with those authors. I do want to try out those authors. I have seen um, some of their books. I'm pretty sure both of them. So Soraya Wilson, for sure. I'm pretty sure she has a couple books on Kindle Unlimited. Um, but I am definitely going to look for some books because like I said, I can't blame them for me not getting into those last two novellas. I think I was just kind of burned out. You know, I'm not like a romance reader. I read just very few throughout the year. 
So it could have just been I was burned out on that. I don't know. But again, that, that's my synopsis. I know a lot of you from uh, the interactions on our Facebook club. And also I mentioned it in January video. I did mention these novellas and a lot of you were going to read them. So I'm curious. Please leave a comment down below. What did you think about these? If you read these, did you like them? Which one was your favorite? Was there any ones that you didn't like? Am I completely off base? And maybe just because, like I said, I'm not a romance reader. Maybe that's the reason why I didn't connect with these books. So I'm definitely not blaming the books. I just, I do think part of it's me, part of it maybe is just because they're novellas and not full-length novels. Let's get on to the full-length novels. So book number one, The Passengers by John Mars, my rating four stars, Goodreads rating 4.08 stars. That is very rare, as you guys know, that me and Goodreads align in numbers. <laughs> um, this is my fifth John Mars book, so clearly I'm a fan. Um, so let's do synopsis, then my review. Eight self-driven cars set on a collision course. Who lives, who dies, you decide. When someone hacks into the systems of eight self-drive cars, their passengers are set on a fatal collision course. The passengers are a TV star, a pregnant young woman, a disabled war hero, an abused wife fleeing her husband, an illegal immigrant, a husband and wife and parents of two who are traveling in separate vehicles, and a suicidal man. Now the public have to judge who should survive, but are the passengers all that they first seem? The passengers are set in the same world as one of the other author's books, um, The One. And there are several references to the match your DNA, which is from The One. Um, but it's not relevant to readers who haven't read it. So this is a standalone, um, but what is it called? Like interactive standalones? Is that what those are called? I don't know. Anyway, this is a standalone, but just so you know, the when they bring these references up, it's almost like they kind of were thinking, okay, you've already read the one, so you've read this one, but it's not necessary. But the one is a very good book, so I do recommend that. Um, and if you want to read that before this one, then that would be, you know, that would be a good thing. But the one is a really great book. Um, I believe I gave it five stars. Um, I do feel like the author takes a pretty big risk by introducing so many characters with so many different backgrounds and timelines to follow. I thought he handed it really well, like really well. He's really good at that. And because I have read so many books that do that, you find that a lot in the mystery suspense you know, thriller realm genre of books, you do find that some people, the books have a ton of characters. So you tend to, and also the timeline, past and present, past and present, it just seems to be a theme in those books. So I get someone so used to reading them that it doesn't bother me, but he did really take a risk because there's a lot of those characters. There's eight of those people and they each have their own story and they do go back and forth. So plus then you have, not only have those eight drivers, you have the so, you know, the people that are trying to save those eight drivers. So it's, there's a lot of people and a lot of characters that we're talking about. Um, but I just wanted to let you know that because if you are a person that does not like multiple storylines, you may not like this, but he does do it very, very well as usual. Um, this book it has all the things that I love in a thriller, short chapters, suspense, you have guessable, but also some non-guessable twists and turns. You guys know that if a book if I predict everything through the entire book, it's gonna get like a three and a half, four star rating. If the twists are really good and I still guess them, four star rating. If I guess all of them, but there's still a couple that surprise me, five star rating. So I just kind of have my own rating system when it comes to twists and turns. This book has a combination of both. Um, it also has that little bit of a reality TV, social media sprinkled in. I'm not a reality TV watcher much anymore. Used to be a lot when I was younger. Um, but it does have some of that sprinkled in. So if you kind of like that type of thing, it's all in there. Um, this was going to be a hands down fight, another five star read for a John Smart book. But I felt like the momentum really dropped about 80% through. Like I said, I read ebooks, so I kind of tend to talk about it in percentage. Um, I just found that there's several parts of the last 20% that just were unnecessary. Like I think I even mentioned made a post in my Facebook club that I was reading a book that just seemed, I just felt like the, I just kept reading and reading and reading. And I'm like, I was where I look at the percentage. And I'm like, are we still not done? <laughs> like that's how I felt with the last 20% of this, percent of this book. I would just look at it. We're 85%, 86%, 87%. Is this going to be over? Um, but 
it just really made, like I said, really made the ending a little bit too long. Um, so, but it was a good book. Definitely a solid, solid four star read. And I do recommend this book. Just be warned that the momentum does kind of die down a little bit at the end. Um, like I mentioned earlier, this book is set in that same world as the one. And apparently there's a third book as well in the same world um, that the author wrote after The Passengers. And that one is set, it's called The Minders. Um, so I've now added that one to my TBR because I really do kind of like this world um, that is being set here. So I will definitely be picking that one up. I do remember seeing that one on the list of books that Johns Mars had read, but just seeing the cover, I think the cover kind of turned me off. If I remember right, I looked at the cover and I thought, oh, this is gonna be like sci-fi-y, you know? And y'all know I've kind of dabbled in sci-fi books a little bit, only have found one that I really, one or two that I enjoyed. Um, and you know, the one, a little bit of sci-fi stuff with the match your DNA and everything. But anyway, I am definitely gonna pick up The Minders. Let me know if you have read that. Book number two, Ward D by Frieda McFadden. My rating, four stars. Goodreads rating, 4.05 stars. This is my 14th Frieda McFadden book. Y'all know I love Frieda. I don't think I actually read one. Like this is the first one I had read since, did I even have, I don't even think in January I read any of her. So it's, and I read a lot of books in January. And so this, it took me a while to pick up another book for her. And I just, I've had this one for a long time and because it's over on Kindle Unlimited. So I've, I've had it actually downloaded to my Kindle. Don't know why I didn't read it. So I saw it in my library one day and I was like, I need to read that. So synopsis. This book is about medical student Amy Brenner. She is spending the night on a locked psychiatric ward. Amy has been dreading her evening working on Ward D, the hospital's inpatient mental health unit. There are very specific reasons why she never wanted to do this required overnight rotation, reasons nobody can ever find out. And as the hours tick by, Amy grows increasingly convinced something terrible is happening within these tightly secured walls. When patients and staff start to vanish without a trace, it becomes clear that everyone on the unit is in grave danger. This was a solid four-star read for me, but it definitely wasn't my favorite. So let's talk about what I liked and didn't like about this book. Um, when I, whenever I'm kind of like, I, I really have a lot of feelings on a book, I'll separate it by, okay, this is what I liked and what I didn't like because it tends to, I can be more cohesive. <laughs> And what I'm trying to succinct what I'm trying to say. I absolutely love the setting. I mean, what is a better setting for a psychological thriller than a psychiatric ward, especially a locked one because of the people that are in there? Like that is the best setting of any kind of horror movie, psychological thriller. Yes, 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 yes. Um, the story takes place in one night, which again, I love, I love stories that take place in one night. Also going back to the psychiatric ward, you guys know I love like a locked door mystery. Locked door mystery, one night mysteries, two of my favorite, favorite, favorite like subgenres of psychological thrillers. Um, and all, it makes for such a set fast paced, you know, as well, because you know it's gonna end pretty quickly because we're just talking like one day in one room, you know, so it, it, it gets really good. Um, and she did not disappoint as usual with her twists and turns. <laughs> Um, so definitely it, it's a solid, solid four star read for me. Here's just a couple things that I did not like about the book. Um, I felt like it took a long, long time for anything interesting to happen. And pieces of the plot were just too outrageous. Like I, like I said before, I know we sus dis <laughs> suspend disbelief when it comes to psychological thrillers and mysteries, but it just was almost too outrageous. And it's not like her really to drag on and not have a twist and turn pretty early in the book, you know? Like I felt like this one just, it took a long time and I was really surprised by that because it just didn't seem like her usual kind of writing. Although I do feel like it's kind of, like I feel like I am not liking her newer books as much as her older books. And I should go back I feel like now I think about I've read 14 of her books. I think maybe I may do read a couple more and maybe go back and read because a couple of you have told me to go read a couple of her really older books that I have not picked up yet. And so I feel like maybe I need to do that or maybe just over these next several months, 
I finish reading all of her books and then I can do one video, like maybe do a quick video of just all of my like how many stars and like yes, no, maybe or something. I don't know. Let me know if you'd be interested in that. I may like just do as like a small video and just post it in my Facebook club. I don't know. We'll see. Let me know. Um, the second thing is, so if you guys did not know, Frida McFadden is a practicing physician. Well, I mean, I don't know if she's still practicing, but she is a physician. I believe something to do with neurology or something. So like she's a smart cookie. Um, so I kind of expected more in regards to the mental health references. I did not feel like the representation of mental health was done very well. I do have some experience with mental health elements, you know, like with mental health diagnosis. Um, if you guys know me personally, you know what I'm talking about. Um, and I just did not feel like it was portrayed very well in this book. And so that's kind of where I'm coming from. But it's not enough to, like I said, not to give me give it a four star. I mean, again, it's a fiction book. Um, but I just I kind of would that part just kind of surprised me. But anyway, I'm still a huge fan. I'm actually currently reading The Teacher, which I know people have a lot of feelings and thoughts on that. And I cannot wait to talk about it next month in our March reviews or this month in our March review video, um, because it's it's actually taken me a little bit to read it again. I'm finding I don't like her newer books as much as her older books, but um, let me know if you're interested in a Frida only video because I would happy to do that. But like I said, I think I'd want to read all of her books and be stay caught up and then I can, I can actually, you know, give a good rating of a whole of her books and I could rate them from her time that she first wrote it to like, for like the oldest book to the most current. Let me know if you're interested. Book number three, The Patient's Secret by Loris Ann White. My rating, five stars. I did have a five-star rating of a novel in this book. In this. I couldn't remember if I did or not, but I do. Five stars for this book. Goodreads rating, 4.31 stars. This is the second book that I've read from this author. I believe the other one was called The Maid's Diary, if I remember right, which is excellent book. Another five-star read. Um, and this book is available on Kindle Unlimited, so go grab it if you're under, if you have KU. Synopsis. When the battered body of a female jogger is found beneath the cliffs of an idyllic coastal community, these perfect neighbors suddenly don't seem so perfect. Lily Bradley is a respected psychotherapist married to a distinguished professor. They live in a dream house with their two children in close-knit Story Cove. Lily lives a well-ordered life, or it seems, as a therapist, she knows everyone keeps things hidden, even her. Then sensual and free-spirited Arwen Harper rolls into town in her hand-painted VW van, her 16-year-old son riding shotgun. Overnight, Story Cove's secrets are no longer safe because Arwen might know her new neighbors better than they know themselves. Now someone is dead and it looks like the murder, and it looks like murder. <laughs> Brutal and personal. The death invites the shrewd eye of Detective Rule Duval. Rue's job is to expose secrets, but she's also an expert at keeping them. This is a fast-paced domestic thriller. As you know, domestic thrillers, again, is one of my favorites. I love, I love thrillers that are set in neighborhoods. That's why I love Sally Hepworth, because almost all of her books are like domestic, you know, thrillers and nosy neighbors and all that. And who does not love a nosy neighbor book? I mean, come on. I live in a boring neighborhood, so it's always so fun to like read about these really interesting neighborhoods. Um, there's multiple points of view, many moving parts. Um, I found all of them very easy to follow though. So again, it's one of those ones that you kind of go back and forth, but it's easy to follow. So no worries there. Um, there were so many shocking twists in this. Um, and many, many of the chapters ended with cliff, cliffhangers, which made this book hard to put down. And if you know me, you know, I read at night, typically like I'll read in bed. And so this one kept me up a couple late nights. I read this in one and a half days, if I remember right. And because those short chapters, like, and when they hinted a cliffhanger, you can't just put the book down, even if you're falling asleep, like no way, even if your alarm is going to go off at five o'clock in the morning and it's midnight. I have to go at least read until there's not a cliffhanger. So let me know if you're with me. Um, this was so well written. The pacing was perfect, excellent characterization. Um, and actually the story, which it sounded so familiar as I was reading it. Um, and then after I finished reading it and I was looking more into the story, um, 
It actually was inspired by a really horrific true crime that made the headlines in Canada. So it's like a can Canadian true crime. And being a person that listens to um, a daily, I listen daily on podcasts, true crime podcasts, I kept thinking throughout the book that parts of the story just seemed so familiar, but I didn't connect it till I finished reading. And honestly, I had just read, just listened on a podcast to the story that this one is kind of, you know, it, it kind of refers to in the book. And I can't tell you though, I can't tell you the true crime reference because it only give away this book. So read this book, it's on Kill Unlimited, go grab it and then you'll know it, then look up the story that this one is kind of based on and read that story and you're gonna be so horrified about that. But this book is amazing. Book number four, All the Little Raindrops by Mia Sheridan. My rating, three stars, Goodreads rating 4.07 stars. See, the stars don't align with this one. Um, I found this through Amazon Prime, I'm pretty sure, but I think it's also on Kindle Unlimited, but I did get an email from Amazon Prime with some books that were available, and this one is one I saw because I've heard of Mia Sheridan. Right now, I think there's like a couple books that are super popular by her, and so I saw that, I'm like, oh, this sounds really interesting. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about the synopsis, and then we'll talk about my three-star rating. It's senior year spring break and Noel, Meyer, and Evan Sinclair have been kidnapped. Neither knows why they were chosen, only that they share a tragic past. Evan's father got away with killing Noel's mother, effectively ruining her family when the death was ruled an accident. Despite the connection that should have made them enemies, the teens instead unite to face their other common denominator, their abductors. Noel and Evan survive one sadistic circumstance after another, eventually making a harrowing escape, but every happy ending comes at a price. Years later, Evan, now a private investigator, revisits the crime when he learns it may be ongoing. He reaches out to Noel for help, and they discover that the answers lie with a man known only as the Collector. To close their case and solve the ones that followed, Noel and Evan must unmask this mysterious spectator, the only man who knows enough secrets to take their captors down. Firstly, I don't normally talk about trigger warnings, as you know, in my book review videos. I figure if someone is worried about the content of a book, they'll look up, you know, if, if it's something that they are triggered from books on a regular basis, that they'll look up to see what the trigger warnings are for the books. So I don't really talk about them. And as you know, since I do really read a lot of dark horrors, thriller, mystery, psychological thrillers, that there's bound to be something in the book that could trigger people. So I figure, like I said, people will look up the warnings before they read. I personally prefer to dive into books blind without looking up anything more than just the synopsis of a book, as you guys know. But due to the dark, <laughs> intense content of this book, I do want to share some of the trigger warnings because it's a little bit more than a book that I've, you know, there's only one other book that I would say that compares to some of the stuff in this book. And I'll talk about that in a second. So in this book, there is human trafficking, sexual assault, rape, torture, and kidnapping. And to the extreme of all these, because obviously you're probably thinking, well, I've read about sexual assault in this book that you didn't give a trigger, trigger warning on. This is at a horrific level. Okay. This is, you're talking like the horror movie Hostel if you guys know what I mean. Um, I believe from what I've read though, on this author, because I kept thinking, okay, wait a second. Like this is where I'm like a little like shocked because I'm pretty sure this author that I've seen talked about over on Book Talk and on YouTube, you know, BookTube and, and Book Talk, those things always confuse me, over on TikTok and YouTube. She's a romance writer, right? Like romance suspense. So I kind of thought it was going to be that going into it. And so I, <laughs> I, I'm not even sure what this one was supposed to be classified as. I hope that it's not being classified as a romance suspense because, um, no, this is a, this is a horror book. It is even more horror than thriller. If you've read Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter, I think you would enjoy this one because the level of violence is definitely slim, is definitely similar. Um, I would say Pretty Girls is actually more elevated. And you guys, I, I, I cannot remember the rating I gave on that book. I felt like it was a high rating. I think it was one of the 
only ones of Karen Slaughter that I gave such a high rating to, but the violence is similar. Um, but I do think that Pretty Girl's a little bit more elevated over this one. This book though, it really kind of felt like a episode of Criminal Minds. I'm a huge Criminal Minds fan and it just, it, that's what it felt like throughout the book. And that book, that, especially the new Criminal Minds, if you guys have seen the remastered one, I don't remember what channel it's on. Is it on Paramount? It's a lot darker than the original series. So if you don't know that, you know, now we're, now we're talking about TV shows. <laughs> if you didn't know, like, I think there was like 13 seasons of Criminal Minds and it stopped suddenly. And then I think it took a couple years, right? To make this new one. I think because of, I think because of, you know, 2020 and pandemic and all that stuff. Um, and the series they brought back was a little bit darker, like a little, you know, a little bit much. That's what this one reminded me of. So if you do like that, I think you would like this book. And I'm not saying it's a bad book. I don't really, it, it's so hard to talk about this book without giving too much away. So I guess my three star rating is more around like, I didn't feel like things like you have this like crazy thing going on and it's just really horrific stuff. And then it just turns real weirdly. Like it just goes from that to maybe more of a romantic suspense type thing. So it just didn't feel very like the genres did not just meld together very well. I just felt like it was like this really crazy thing here. And then we have this and then I don't know. The ending is worth sticking out for though. I really, really liked the ending and I felt like it was summed up. So that's why it's a three star and why I didn't DNF it because I really was so invested in the story of Noel and Evan. I loved their story together and I loved the people they were after their, you know, the situation they went through. I really liked that piece of it, that part of the book. And it wasn't really the horrific stuff that they were going through that I disliked in the front of the book. I watch horror movies, thriller movies, you know, that kind of stuff doesn't put me off. It's just the fact that the two pieces, the two halves of the book, to me didn't seem like they were very cohesive and went very well together. Um, and I was able to figure out pretty much everything early on. Like I, there was no surprise at the end for me besides just I liked the ending. Like I liked how it all wrapped up. Um, but there really was like the mystery part of it. It, it was really easy to figure out. I kind of felt, I don't know. Let me know. <laughs> I'm just so curious. This book just really confused my mind. It was really hard for me to rate. Let me know if you've read it. Have you read anything else by Mia Sheridan? I cannot remember the book that everybody's talking about that she wrote. And I've heard mixed reviews on that one as well. But anyway, let me know. And the last book that I read in the month of February was called The Only Survivors by Megan Miranda. My rating four stars, Goodreads rating 3.55 stars. So our, our stars are lining pretty close there. I picked this book up on Apple Books. It was on sale for $2.99. Um, at the time of this review, it's still the same price and it's also $2.99 over on Kindle as well. A decade ago, two vans filled with high school seniors on a school service trip crashed into a Tennessee ravine, a tragedy that claimed the lives of multiple classmates and teachers. There were nine students who managed to escape the river and their lives changed. A year later, after one of the survivors dies by suicide on the anniversary of the crash, the rest of them make a pact to come together each year to commemorate that terrible night, to keep one another safe, to hold one another accountable, or both. Their annual meeting place, a house on the Outer Banks, has long been a refuge, but by the 10th anniversary, Cassidy Bent has worked to distance herself from the tragedy and from the other survivors. She's changed her mobile number. She's blocked the other's email addresses. This year, she is determined to finally break the ties once and for all. But on the day of the reunion, she receives a text with an obituary attached. Another survivor is gone. Now they are seven. And Cassidy finds herself hurling back toward the group, wild with grief and suspicion. Almost immediately, something feels off this year. Cassidy is the first to notice when Amelia the annual group organizer slips away overwhelmed. This wouldn't raise alarm except for the impending storm. Suddenly they're facing the threat of closed roads and surging waters again. Then Amaya stops responding to her phone and after they've, after all they've been through, she wouldn't willingly make them worry, would she? And as they promised long ago, each survivor will do whatever he or she can do to save one another. So this is the first Megan Miranda book that I have read, but I actually have, I think three or four of her books on my 
TBR list. I've had them on there for quite a while. Um, until I saw this one for $2.99, I was like, okay, I'm going to pick one up. This one sounds good. Um, I think they're the most recent one. Is it called the Vanishing Something? I don't know. I have that one. Um, I have one of them. Um, I think her most recent one on my Libby app reserved right now on hold. So hopefully I get that one soon. Here's what I liked about the book. Um, for one, I always enjoy books that are centered around like groups of people. I think it like, I think it finds it like you get their stories. It just tends to be more dynamic and you get all their fascinating stories. And I do like the multiple storylines. So for me, like, I feel like you, they make an effort that you get to know each of them. So I really like that. And this writing is, is so good. Like this author has the strongest writing. I definitely was not very far into this book before I was like, yes, I'll be picking up more things from this author. I loved her writing style. I love the setting and the atmosphere. Again, it kind of had that creepy, like they were on the, you know, on the beach, but it was like a creepy like beach. I don't know anything about the Outer Banks, but it just, you really, the setting on this was so good. And the author did such a great, great job of setting that up for us. Um, but the reason for a four star rating versus a five star rating, I do prefer more fast paced thrillers. This was definitely a slow burn. If that's how all of her novels are going to be, I don't know how many I will read. I'm going to try one more. And if it's another slow burn, I just don't know how many of them I can read because I, I like the fast paced thrillers. I, I like them when they go quick. So I don't know. Let me know if you've read anything by this author. Um, also the last thing was the ending. It was not a bad ending, but it also wasn't particularly shocking or surprising. And I feel like I like, you know, shocking, surprising endings when you're reading a thriller. So it just wasn't that for me, but anyway, overall a really solid, solid book. I think she's had, like I said, she's a very strong writer. I love the story. Um, again, if you've read anything by Megan Miranda, let me know which one I should read next. There you go, guys. That is everything that I read in the month of February. It's actually a super slow start of March. <laughs> I have only, I'm still reading the first book. I'm filming this on the 9th and I have not even gotten through one book, but I do plan on rectifying that. I just, I've been so like, if you're watching the rest of my videos, you know, my energy has just been super low and I just haven't been, haven't been reading that much, but I am definitely, as soon as I get done with the book that I'm currently reading, we are going to knock them out. I have a Riley Sager kind of up next on my TBR after I finish the book that I'm currently reading. So we'll be reading that one next and hopefully try to get at least two more. My goal every month is to read four. That way I can stay within my goal of trying to hit around 50 books for the year. So I know some months I'm at every more than others. So if I usually, if I say my goal is four, I'm already books ahead right now. So if I say I'm going to read four books for the rest of the year, then I'll hit my goal. Um, so that is the plan is to try to read four for March. Let me know what you guys are reading. What did you read in February? What do you look forward to coming up? Again, if you want to join us over at Facebook, that link will be down below and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.